I get a thriller of a story for you today. I'd like to begin by quoting the words of Psalm 76, verse 10. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. With the remainder of wrath, you shall gird yourself. The idea here is this, that when God goes into battle, even his enemy ends up fighting for him. And as he says, with the remainder of wrath, you shall gird yourself. The idea here is that the conqueror gets the spoils of war. You remember the story of Jael putting to death Sisera, and at the end of the song that Deborah and Barak sing, they imagine uh, Sisera's mama looking out through the lattice and saying, where's my boy? He always brings me these lovely pieces of clothing that are carefully stitched inside and out. They have beautiful tapestries and so on. It was the spoils of war she was thinking about. And so here the scripture says that God not only ends up turning the wrath of man to his own praise, but it's as if he gets the wrath of man to wear as the spoils of war as he marches in triumph. So I was looking at some debates online and I came across one in a discussion between Richard Dawkins and the Archbishop of Canterbury, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams. It dates back to November 7, 2012, and it was at Oxford University. And in his introduction, Richard Dawkins says the following, I was singing to myself in the shower this morning, and I realized it was a hymn. And then in explanation, he says, I'm a cultural Anglican. I'm not going to sing it now, he said. I will just say it. Um, it's a hymn that we probably all know. And then he quoted the first few lines. It is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to be. And then the atheist added, I'm afraid the hymn goes off the rails rather after that point. He's arguing the case that this magnificent universe seems too wonderful to be. He says it's so beautifully presented that it gives the impression of being designed. And it seems too wonderful. Well, that caused me to look up the words of the hymn. I wasn't familiar with it, this Anglican hymn. And it's a hymn by William Walsham Howe. And so I went to hymnary.org and I read the lyrics. And just think about this now. Some unknown Sunday school teacher in an Anglican church somewhere implanted these words in the heart and mind of Richard Dawkins and they'll be there forever. Here's how it goes. Let me quote to you the first five stanzas. It is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to be, that God's own Son should come from heaven and die to save a child like me. And yet I know that it is true. He chose a poor and humble lot and wept and toiled and mourned and died for love of those who loved him not. I cannot tell how he could love a child so weak and full of sin. His love must be most wonderful if he could die my love to win. I sometimes think about the cross and shut my eyes and try to see the cruel nails and crown of thorns and Jesus crucified for me. But even could I see him die, I could but see a little part of that great love which, like a fire, is always burning in his heart. That's the truth that resides in Richard Dawkins' heart. And it's just right at the surface. Why else would he spontaneously break into singing in the shower? 
if the Spirit of God wasn't needling him to think about the cross of Calvary and Jesus' love for him. But that's not the end of the story. Having looked at hymnary.com and, and read these magnificent words, I then thought, well, I'd like to hear the tune. And so I looked up a site called Traditional Hymns. And I guess it's not the standard tune for the hymn, but it's a beautiful tune. I listened to it. And when I finished listening to it, I then went down to the comments section. And this is what I read. Ella Stewart. Richard Dawkins brought me here and made me cry. No name. That's how I got here. Rebecca L. Another Dawkins visitor. Tee hee. Another name. Me too. And another. Me too. Marvin K. LOL. I thought it's just me, but Richard Dawkins brought me here as well. Roger Sweet. God works in mysterious, to us, ways, his wonders to perform, even using people like Richard Dawkins to show his glory and power, and I might add, and his love. Chloe Poole. Richard Dawkins has brought a whole congregation here from the Oxford debate with Archbishop Rowan Williams. Thank you, Richard, so much. And then another name, uh, looks like an Indian name. Yes, me too. Richard Dawkins brought me here. The scenery is wonderful, awesome. So is the hymn. And what the Son of God has done for me, a mere worm, a speck in his creation. Beautiful and inspiring are his master strokes. What richness and diversity. It was God who did it. He makes the wrath of man to praise him. He takes those who are fighting against him to advance his cause. God uses the dying words of Voltaire to lead people to Christ. Dear Christian, the sovereign God is at work. Your neighbors, your relatives, people you think are hopeless, the seed of the truth of God is in their hearts and minds. Pray today that God will stimulate that truth, will cultivate that truth and cause it to spring up, perhaps singing in the shower or driving down the road, that the Spirit of God will speak to them again. And God will use his word and honor his word and cause faith to spring up even in the most difficult soil to God be the glory.